Oh, thank you, Brent, and thank you for the introduction. And uh, well, I'm presenting out of Belgium. That's a small, small but brave country somewhere in Europe. And uh, Felix, my co-presenter, uh, is presenting from his home in Canada. So uh, let's take it away with, uh, we're going to talk about the EBU pyramid. Uh, we did give it some new paint and we're going to talk about the changes. And also we were asked to talk about the JTM tested program plans uh, for the future. So let's start uh, probably by uh, doing a reverse presentation and say, if you want to know more, just download our uh, EBU document. It's called Tech 3371. And actually the title of this document and the subtitle of this document is called The Minimum User Requirements to Build and Manage an IP-Based Media Facility Using Open Standards and Open Specifications. So with this being said, uh, please note the link. You'll get it afterwards as well. Uh, I'll hand it over to Felix to uh, kick off with the first statement. Yeah, and uh, for anyone who have build a media over IP system already or a facility or a small project using ST2110 uh, transport, uh, you'll know that this can be a very manual and tedious work uh, compared to what we're used with SDI technology. Um, so imagine the effort when you have to scale that to a full building like uh, the building in behind me that is the, the, the new headquarters for the French service uh, in Montreal for CBC. Um, so even worse, imagine the, the fragility of maintaining in operation such a complex system over time. And that's why a group of early adopters came together under the EBU umbrella uh, in 2018 to write down uh, what, what ensemble of standards and specification it will take to achieve a major media over IP project. And basically that's, uh, that's where the, the EBU pyramid uh, is the full stack for media over IP. Uh, it's how it was born. Um, so here's the, the pyramid. It, it's, not, it's not like a potato, it's really uh, a pyramid shape. So uh, the first publication, as I said, was uh, built in 2018, uh, was, uh, was built, was uh, published in 2018. Uh, but since then, uh, uh, the, the adopters, the early adopters, the fields builders, uh, talk together and learn, gain experience, share their lessons learned, and polish, clarify, and completed the work so the market has progressed uh, uh, also since 2018. So the new colors of the layer of the pyramid reflects uh, the, the progress of the industry and the maturity of the systems. Um, so the, this update is from this summer in July 2020. So we're going over the, the different parts and we we'll talk about the change uh, that we, uh, we made. So First of all, uh, there's a couple of, of fundamental principles that apply to the, the, the whole document. Uh, it's a recommendation to really, uh, for all the aspects, all the standards, all the specifications, it's always to follow cybersecurity best practices. There's, there's a number of best practices well known in place and we, we really should consider that from day one in, in, in every aspect of uh, making products and building facilities. Uh, implementable in software, uh, because going to IP, the reason is to get the flexibility, the agility and the scalability, and this is uh, achieve a true more software component in our system. And reusing IT and internet standards as much as possible. We don't want to reinvent the wheel when there's already a good standard out there, either by the, the ITF, the IEEE, um, the, W3C, uh, let's try to reuse those standards because those guys know what they're doing and maybe uh, it's not perfect from for a broadcast, but maybe it's it's very good and we, we save a lot by, um, by leveraging that. The other uh, addition uh, to the, um, uh, so one addition uh, to the, the pyramid uh, revision 
is uh, providing a definition of open. We use the term open standards, open specification, but this word is often undefined. So the document provides a definition and it's based on that the documentation needs to be publicly accessible, needs to be adequate for, for, for implementations. Uh, there need, there's a need for a clear licensing, um, ideally free uh, license. And also there's uh, some notion about backward compatibilities of, of new versions in there. So let's go uh, step by step in the pyramid and let's start with the, with the tip, uh, Willem, if you want to. Well, the tip of the pyramid or the top of the pyramid or the tip of the iceberg or uh, the loaf, if you would look uh, to plants or, or potatoes, there's a nice green loaf on the top. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you see uh, a bit more. So this is uh, actually uh, what the pyramid is about. So on top, you see the media transport and actually uh, you see it's green. And at the bottom of the slide deck, you see the legend. And green means if you go on the market and you want to buy something, this type of equipment, well, that's widely available. There's no stress at all. So we put some details here, but maybe it's not the moment to go into the details. We just should say what's new here. Uh, so the interoperability, that's good. Uh, we've been doing a JTNM tested plan later, more about this. But there's something new here. Um, with those new builders that have been building new buildings, they also discovered that dash 30 level C was a bit maybe too much to have asked. So the, the, um, we relaxed this a little bit from uh, level C to level B. And uh, the most important thing about uh, the audio streams is that, that they discovered that they just need to bundle those uh, streams that need to be uh, related or channels that need to be related into the same stream. So that's, uh, that's a good part. Even if you look at the results of JTNM tested, many of the boxes or devices or equipment that have been tested have a good score uh, for level B audio. So I think we're, uh, we're on a good roll here. Uh, the second, um, if you don't, if you don't mind, a quick question on that last slide. Um, can you just very briefly say what the difference between B and C is? So uh, I think level C, uh, so B and uh, C. I think uh, Felix, I think CBC was one of the proponents to say we need to have 125 microseconds uh, audio profile. So in order to have uh, in-ear monitoring and to be sure that artists on a podium don't have the, the comb filtering effect and that sort of things. The other part is that level C uh, gives you more channels up to 64 uh, and level B is just up to eight channels, but also with 125 microseconds. So that's, that's the difference here. Wonderful, thank you. So going to the second layer uh, of the pyramid, that's uh, what we call time and sync. Now we do have all these wonderfully elementary streams with, dash, uh, with 2110, uh, the audio, the video, the ancillary data, but of course it needs to be synced up. Now we also discovered that you have PTP running on the network, you can log into switches to figure out if the switches do see the PTP uh, boundary clocks and that sort of nice stuff. But actually when you have your media node on the network it's hard to find out uh, from a, probably on the box, uh, even on the box, that it's really synced to PTP. So we propose a few things to monitor uh, media nodes uh, to see if they're really synchronized to PTP. And we propose some RFCs that are out in the open that just do this. So it's just a matter of adopting those. Uh, Multi-interface PTP redundancy, that's also an interesting one. Um, and synchronization of audio, video and data essences. Well, that's something that, that's maybe at the bottom and, and, and is a little bit of has a little bit of a yellow color. Maybe Felix, you can uh, give a, a, a small hint here. Yeah, and 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 some hope. Um, the, the the synchronization of audio and video and, and data uh, is comes with the fundamental characteristic of ST twenty one ten. Remember, we have a system with separate essence, uh, so different streams for different essence audio and video, for example. So there's a challenge on maintaining the, the synchronization, like what we call uh, lip sync. Um, in a very simple scenario, um, 
you know, RTP timestamps in of the flow could be used to realign flows that have followed a slightly different path. Uh, and 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 this is what RTP timestamps are for. Uh, however, if you build a little bit complex system where uh, flows are going through a number of, of processing devices, you lose that timing information because this time information is reset every time you go into a new device. So uh, I'm aware of some work in the, the same TST 2110-10 revision that will uh, hopefully address that. I'm really confident it will. I'm looking forward because that will be the way to uh, finally um, uh, go away from a full manual timing of the plant like we used to do in SDI and go to a more automated or at least assisted timing uh, with information, uh, timing information within the stream. So uh, stay tuned on that. Uh, but certainly the pyramid will, will re reflect uh, the use of these uh, features when they are available. So for layer three, I would hand over back to you again, Felix. Operational control. Yeah, and, and the good news on this one is uh, we've seen more green here. There's really an uptake in the adoption of the network media open specification, NMOS. Implementations uh, into more device, more products, uh, not just in the lab anymore, but in shipping products. Um, and that's a very important news because um, uh, there's really a need for a minimal set of, of control across the board as a common methodology and not a mix of all kind of proprietary uh, uh, protocols. Um, the original pyramid was silent on a key requirement on device control. So now it's added, but then on that one, there's not a common way to do that yet. Uh, so the pyramid calls for an open method, and there's a few uh, in the market that can be defined as an open method uh, according to the definition of open, open that we give in the document. ISO 7 is mentioned, and MOS ISO 7, uh, uh, because it currently supports Evan and Tally uh, applications. Um, ongoing work in the AMOA might lead to some uh, using that the same kind of transport for more all type of device control. Um, yeah, that's what I can say on, on that layer as quickly. And on, on the next layer, um, that one is very important uh, to me because that's really the one that where uh, the configuration monitoring is the, the ability to really uh, build large facility and bring the manageability, I don't know if it's a re real word in English, but of large facility. You need to be able to, uh, to configure centrally and monitor your devices. And the requirement in there were clarified um, and strengthened to make, uh, to, to help people to understand what they need to have in their device to achieve that. Yeah, for sure, that's right, Felix. And that, that's also true for the time and synchronization. A little bit uh, the, the same issue here. So if you uh, want to please many of the vendors and buy as much boxes as possible, and you want to put them in the rack somewhere in your server room, you don't want to walk over all the time uh, to check them or uh, have as many different applications to configure them or monitoring them. So that's a very important uh, layer as well. But maybe now the, the, the most important layer and, and the foundation of our pyramid is probably what we would uh, call security. Um, moving from SDI uh, to IP, well, this is a new concern to us. Well, I, I'm not aware of any virus that runs on SDI, uh, but probably over IP, we've seen a few of them. Um, of course, there are some uh, recommendations. There's uh, a recommendation 148, uh, security tests, uh, security safeguards, etc from EBU and the previous pyramid mentioned something like, well, it would be very nice if you could secure at least your control uh, to the whole plant. Now we're happy to see that uh, the first part of the Enma security best practices is published. And uh, we're mm, a little bit less pleased that, well, a small warning and uh, nobody should uh, feel uh, targeted here because we really mean the whole industry. 
as well as a vendor, as well as a user, we should look more into security because it's not just someone to blame. No, it's all of us. We should be more attentive to, to uh, security. Of course, it doesn't bring you any, uh, let's say, uh, things that will give you a better production, but it's some sort like, a, a, well, just to be sure that you can get on air, right? Now, we're pretty pleased uh, to announce something completely different here. So this is the full pyramid, once again, uh, with all the details on it. Uh, we've been over all the layers step by step. But we've been talking about this pyramid for two years now, and we've been talking to uh, NABA, the North American Broadcast Association, as well as to WBU, and they uh, were happy to endorse uh, the pyramid. Uh, now that we have our update, we were asking a little bit more around um, if there's a wider consensus in the industry, and it seems there is. So as well, uh, not just the user bodies, but also the industry bodies like AMW, ASMT, and VSF, um, so JTNM, also endorse this pyramid. So we're very happy uh, with uh, this work being uh, endorsed. So if you go to the EBU website and you want to download the pyramid, the official uh, document looks a little bit like this. So if you want to use it, feel free to use. Uh, don't change anything, just use it as you see it here and all be good. Now, Felix, how would you use this as a practical tool? this pyramid yeah so the the document um ebu tech uh, 3371 uh, as a as a description of all those uh, items and uh, uh, one of the usage for it is uh, when you have to design or to architect a system uh, you use that as a checklist to consider all the different aspects. Does it apply to you? Is it important for you? But at least you don't forget imp important parts. Uh, and when you, you uh, have to do uh, an RFP or a tender, um, you can use, uh, you can reuse some of the items there, um, some of the vocabulary there uh, in your tender, uh, being a technical requirement or business requirements. And also we have um, produced a tool to help uh, you have a discussion uh, between vendors and, and customers, and that's the maturity checklist. So the, the maturity checklist is basically extract all the main key points of, uh, of the, the document into a checklist. Uh, so you can easily have a, a discussion. I mean, originally you could imagine during an uh, NAB or IBC, you bring your your uh, checklist with you and, and you can have a conversation with your vendors. And also some vendors have done the exercise of uh, running some of their product into the checklist and can already provide you the answer to the different items. Are they doing it? Uh, is it on their roadmap? Uh, are they not planning to do it for some reason? Um, so it's really a tool to have um, have a discussion about these things. We 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 don't expect the the vendors will provide you all the items on that list uh, as of today. Uh, that's a maturation process. We have to live through, and it doesn't prevent you to build a facility in IP, but it's just to have a sane conversation and a clear direction for uh, for all the industry. So all the pyramid resource, including the checklist, can be found at that uh, URL. And I leave you the floor, Willem, for the the next part on JTNM tested. Okay, but that's completely unprepared. Damn it! <laughs> what can I do? Uh, okay, JTNM tested program plans. So. Um, I'm not aware that everybody knows what JTNM tested is, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick introduction. What is a tested program? Well, it's a documented insight into how vendor equipment aligns with SAMTI ST2110 and SAMTI ST2059 standards, the JTN MTR1001 and the AMWA NMOS specifications. So testing of NMOS registries and controllers were added this time at the event and just to uh, underline, it's not a certification program, and to underline, it's a snapshot in time. 
So each time you do the test again, there might be a new revision of the hardware or a new software revision and the results could be completely different. So what happened this year? Well, you all know uh, what happened. Uh, we had to cancel the face-to-face -face event. Uh, so we needed to pivot the complete program into self-testing. Of course, according to the whole JTNM test plan that we've been building on uh, over the last years. So what did we do? Uh, you see the badges on the right hand side, normally they were these circular badges, but we do have two new badges uh, because the dash, uh, sorry, the 2110 test was completely self-tested. So we got the results from the vendors back and uh, documented this into an Excel spreadsheet. For the TR1001, we had the same thing, it was self-tested, we documented those results in a spreadsheet. But the NMOS controllers, that's uh, the work of, of CBC and uh, the team of Felix, they could test um, the controllers via the cloud and a VPN tunnel. So that was not a self-tested, that was a full tested uh, result that we got there. So how does it look like if we uh, plot this in on our pyramid? The SMT ST2110 test plan covers the media transport layer and the time and sync layer for the biggest part. The NMOS TR1001 test plan covers the operational control and the configuration and monitoring for the part. Of course, there was a third thing I didn't mention yet. There was some cybersecurity testing, not to blame and shame anyone, just to be sure that people get some sort of an awareness about cybersecurity. Uh, a quick overview, who did participate? Uh, 34 vendors published their test results in the final catalog. Almost 60 products were tested against the 2110 test plan. 44 products, uh, products against the NMOS and TR1001 test plan, including four NMOS registries and six NMOS controllers. Now, this is one of the main reasons that we think that we could uh, repaint our pyramid a little bit more into green. Uh, by the way. So if you want to dive into the catalog uh, to see the test results or to learn more about the test plans, you just go to the jtnm.org website and uh, you find all the things that you need over there. So conclusions of this test plan. We had this year improved results compared to the previous event. So one reason the more to paint our uh, pyramid a little bit more green. The JTNM tested team was not able to fully verify the self-testing results, obvious. The self-testing is useful for improvement uh, or improving implementations, yes, check the box. Remote testing must be worked out for proper validation of results. You know, the more you go to the tip of the pyramid, you get more into the, the, the plumbing and, and the, the high bandwidth stuff. So piping this over the internet to do tests on, on, on traffic shaping, that's a little bit hard, of course, but we'll figure out a way to do this in future. JTNM forms as well a JTNM tested board to drive the tested program. Now, to answer the question, what about future plans? Well, there's a next round is targeted for March or April 2021. Uh, assuming it will be no face-to-face -face event, but let's hope it will be one. Uh, there will be more remote testing and an improved version of the self-testing. This is all we can say at this moment. So with this being said, I would like to thank everyone for listening to us. If you would like to contact us, reach out via our email addresses here on the slide deck. Back to you, Brett. Okay, thank you. We do have a question and it's from Wes. So Wes, uh, would you like to ask, ask sure. your question um, directly? I, I was just going to... I was just going to ask, um, is there an official position from the EBU on uh, PTP version 2.1? Is that going to be mandatory? Is it going to be optional? Is it going to be recommended? Um, or hasn't it been de decided yet? Well, I, I mean, the EBU pyramid rely on SMT ST2059. So uh, my best bet will be that we will follow uh, what SMT will do about it. I mean, EBU is not really into um, developing profiles uh, or, or uh -huh. so that will be my best bet is that we, we will follow the, the industry on this. Uh, what do you think, Willem? You know, if it will become available and it may be hopefully has some uh, security features in it, 
we would love to see it but actually the pyramid is from a user perspective to see how we could build actually broadcast plans uh, with the technology that has been promoted uh, at IP showcases uh, at IBC uh, and NAB um, so this is the best shot we have with the things that are on the market as we speak we would be rather happy to see that it would be adopted of course uh, because of the feature set that it has uh, and that it comes with it I hope this gives more or less an answer so so you'd like to see it but there hasn't been any official mandate is that what that what is that what I'm hearing exactly okay thank you okay great well guys thank you very much for the presentation I appreciate it um, as I don't think you touched on it but uh, a number of aspects of the pyramid are covered in the JTNM TR 1001-1 document. And uh, John, if you wanna just uh, come off your uh, uh, mute and yeah. Um, I just, uh, on the spur of the moment, asked John if he wanted to say anything about the new revision of that coming soon. Well, so uh, as, as you'd imagine, um, the document came out in the fall of 2018. Many people have implemented, you know, parts of the recommendations of the uh, TR 1001-1. And uh, there was a bit of feedback. So the working group did put together a, um, a modified version. It'll be published uh, pretty soon now. It's going through all the wickets of all the different organizations involved in the JTNM. Um, there's nothing breakingly different. We mainly clarified some points that weren't necessarily perfectly clear in the original version, um, added some clarity, added a few, you know, simplifications to some requirements, but overall it's mainly a cleanup revision to make points clear that maybe people didn't think were clear in the first version. So look for that in a website near you one day. Okay, great. Guys, thank you very much. Appreciate your time, all of you.